Good evening, people watching. I'm in 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. I'm down here in my living room. Uh, it's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried, and rose again on the third day according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is strictly by the blood. It is... Uh, Grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You acknowledge the fact that you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you're justified by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready which is going to happen at any time and you're sealed until the day of redemption which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation the holy spirit will indwell in you the holy spirit will lead you guide you the holy spirit will minister to you the holy spirit will honor you he will do all that change you all of that I got to give you this article. So Russia signs a deal to deploy tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus. So Russia and Belarus signed a deal today formalizing the deployment of Moscow's tactical nuclear weapons on the territory of its ally. Although control of the weapons remains in the Kremlin. So... Putin announced the deployment of the shorter range weapons in Belarus earlier this year in a move widely seen as a warning to the West for their support, um, military support of Ukraine. Now, when the weapons would be deployed... That's another subject because it hasn't been announced. He has said the construction of storage facilities in Belarus for them would be completed by July 1st. The Russian Defense Ministry said today, now listen to what they said. In the context of an extremely sharp escalation of threats on the western borders of Russia and Belarus, a decision was made to take countermeasures in the military nuclear spear. So speaking in Moscow, Alexander Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, said the movement of the nuclear weapons has begun. Period. Has begun. Someone had sent me this article earlier today and I had already seen it. But um, yeah, this is not good. Then, this article comes out about Iran. This is off of RT. So, Iran unveils a 2,000-kilometer range ballistic missile. Iran's on a roll right now. And their role is Israel and then the U.S., so this says Iran has showcased a new ballistic missile named Kibar or Ki or yeah, Kibar that reportedly boasts a range of over 1200 miles or 2000 kilometers and carries a payload of 1.5 tons. Now let me stop right there and I'm going to say something. Don't think see Iran don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of resources. Their resources is Russia, North Korea, China. All these nations are connected. That's their resources. And they all have one thing in common. They hate the U.S. And Israel. So according to a report by Iran, Iran's state-run media outlet, IRNA, 
The rocket needs relatively little time to be prepared for launch. Meaning that it can be used in both strategic and a tactical weapon. Now, Iran's in the news a lot lately. A whole lot. That's why Israel's having all these meetings, like I said earlier. Oh, and if you see somebody here, it is Samson. He just woke up and he's cleaning himself. This is what he does after he, Delilah is sound asleep. He lays on this pillow, which is my good pillow, and he does that. So, but anyway. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, um... It says the country's defense minister, um, Mohammed Ashtiani, who was present at this was an unveiling ceremony today, said that the missile is the result of years long endeavors by his aerospace industries organization. The official also noted that the Kibar, that's the name of this rocket, can penetrate enemy air defenses thanks to the radar evading equipment on board. Now, I believe personally this was done to show Israel what they have and what they're going to do. That's what I believe. And to show the United States also. So it says... Um, Ashtani pointed out that Tehran is taking steps to equip the forces, equip the armed forces in various areas of missiles, drones, air defense, with more weapon system to be revealed to the public down the line. So they're threatening more weapon systems down the line. Back in February, um, the head of Iran's Revolutionary Guards Aerospace Force announced that the Islamic Republic had at its disposal a cruise missile with the range of 1,650 kilometers, or which is equivalent to 1,025 miles. Iranian state TV reported at the time that this rocket is called Pava. P-A-V-E-H, Pava. Last fall, the same official claimed that Tehran had developed a hypersonic missile, which the U.S. reacted with skepticism. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't react with skepticism because, like I said, <clears throat> they're getting their funds from, and part of probably their parts from China, Iran, or um, North Korea, and Russia. It is believed that only that at present only a handful of nations such as the US, China, and Russia have the necessary technology to build such advanced weapons. Oh really now. <laughs> Iran has been actively developing its uh, missile capabilities since the 1980s, while the US and some European nations have repeatedly voiced concern over the Islamic Republic's uh, program, Tehran insists its efforts in the field are defensive in nature, which, <laughs> yeah, sure, right. Of course. So, <laughs> I'm going to link all of this in the description box. And if you, the TV is blinking in the background, that's what you see the lights going in and out. And if anything else comes up, I will let you know. I'll be back on, so I'm going to link both of these articles in the description box, so I'll be back later. Thank you.